Yes, hello again. Today is the 15th of March 2015 and this video is about the third card in the Celtic Cross. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the third card and what it means and then I'll give you three examples using um, the Seven of Cups, the Sun card and the Five of Pentacles. So everybody agrees on the placement of the cards, of cards one and two, right? The first one goes upright in the middle and the second card goes across the first one. But where does the third card go, right? Some people put the third card above, right? And they say it indicates maybe the goal or the destiny or the highest you can attain at the present, right? So um, in an earlier video, I mentioned something about uh, the goal or destiny being very different things. A goal is something you set. Destiny is something that in a way is set for you. So to take the third card as the goal or destiny, it can be hard to know what, what to actually do with the card in that position. Um, so I think it's, it's when, when you take the third card up above as the goal or destiny, it's, it's, it's difficult. So by contrast, other people put the third card below the first one and say it's the foundation. And, and I'm going to say it makes... It makes sense to put the, to use the third card as foundation, and and I, I want to explain why. And if you put yourself in the position of the questioner for a minute, right? Let's say you're struggling with a certain situation, right? And and you ask a question about the difficulty, um, and it's bad. It's a it's awkward. At least you find it that way. So it's what's real to you, and it's not pleasant. So. If the third card goes up above and shows the best you can attain at the moment and what is coming up, it's a bit like you go from the present, um, shown by the first two cards, to the, the immediate future, right? But if the future is represented by a good card or by an excellent card, how likely are you to believe it or to accept it? Or even if it's true, it can be a bit too much of a leap from the current situation and thinking to go from awkward and dif awkwardness and difficulty right now to great success. Okay, you might be relieved, right? But you might not take it seriously because you've gone from difficulty right now to an easy life in the future. So you, you might want to believe it, um, but you can also think that you're fooling yourself. And this, this, this might not matter for a particular questioner, but I think as a general rule, going from the present that can be difficult or upsetting straight to some future state, it can be a, a bit of a jump or too much of a leap so early on in the reading. The, because the, there's a danger of doubt creeping in or the question not quite believing what the spread shows. Um, and I think this is to be avoided as much as possible. Because if you're feeling defeated or beaten, as often happens with questioners, it's going to be more se more difficult to take seriously or to believe in a good future, at least if you go in one step, right, from the present to the future, and without any background or preparation. But you get that if you take the third card as the foundation. Because then you go from the present atmosphere, shown by the first couple of cards, and we, if we go to the foundation, we're beginning to understand where the atmosphere came from or what it, what it developed out of. And this seems to me like a more logical way to approach an understanding of the question and the answer. At the same time, the foundation card can show us what you can build on, right? So it can be... Um, something good and you can you can incorporate its strengths into your future um, or we can look at the foundation card as showing the past so we can get an idea of what you've done in the past or what you've been like in the past and if it's been if it was good you can build on it um, or maybe you see that the past situation was not very good um, and I'll give an example of this later. Um, so you understand that you've got to change it or make some adjustments in the present and going into the future so you don't repeat the same mistakes. 
um, uh, and or or so that you don't just let the bad stuff slide, so that you remain stuck. So a, a related point is this: somebody can be good at art, and and um, they they can use their artistic skill and ability and build a career on it, right? So they look for occupations where this artistic ability can develop. On the other hand, somebody somebody else might hate cleaning up and cleaning and being tidy. So they should make sure that the job they go for doesn't involve half their time being spent tidying up after other people, right? So the foundation can be something you build on and develop, but it can also be something you make sure you avoid. And that can be just as important to make a point of not building this situation into your plan. So when you, the reader, turn this card, the third card, you keep both types of possibility in mind and don't assume that a weak card means a weak foundation and that nothing good will come of it. And in the same way, we don't assume that a good card in the foundation is going to mean that the person develops something good and lasting, right? Because we, we can start off with benefits and advantages in the beginning or in the foundation, but we may not do much with them. But the rest of the spread is going to show how things will develop. And at this point with the third card, the foundation, we're still understanding um, the basis of, or um, the, the basis of the of the past um, and getting an understanding of what the question is about and how it can be developed. So th this foundation card can show the past as well. It can show what already happened or maybe what didn't happen, right? Because it can refer to something that was left undone. Or maybe it's pointing out a regret that the questioner has or a wish for something that they ignored at the time. But um, they were maybe too afraid to try. Um, there's a French singer called Patrick Bruel and he sings a song, one of his songs is about how um, it's better to have remorse for things that you tried that didn't go well than to have regret for never having tried it in the first place. And that's something to remember as well when looking at the foundation card. Um, so back to the Celtic Cross. We take this third card and we, we turn it and we make sense of it. Um, so we can talk about what it shows and we relate the picture to the question that was asked, keeping in mind the different types of information that, that it may be revealing. Because it can be something to, to build on, it can be something good, or it can be something that was left undone. So we really ought to, or the questioner ought to deal with it rather than continue on, continue on making the same mistake or ignoring the same difficulty, hoping it will go away by itself. So it might be useful at this point to consider some um, examples, right? The, the, this card shows the past and the foundation. So um, maybe we turn the card and we think to ourselves questions like, what was the questioner like in the past? What were the strengths? What were the weaknesses? Though maybe um, if the card's reversed, we would look for weaknesses or think about weaknesses. Or maybe we'd look at the card and ask ourselves what kind of foundation it was. Are we happy with it? Would we have been happy with it or not? And if not, why not? And this is the kind of exercise you can try and practice on your own. Um, and you can take time to come up with some um, some answers that make sense, with or without a question, doesn't matter. So at this point, um, I've got three cards. So I'll show you the Seven of Cups and we'll look at what sort of information this card would give us generally about the question and the foundation. So let me just get the Seven of Cups. And it's this one, right? Fellow Seven Cups, looking at them and, you know, it's got these some odd things in the cup. So if we look at this card and think, what was the question like in the past? We can say maybe they were imaginative, right? Because there's, there's a variety of objects in the different cups. But at the same time, maybe they were spread too thin because we don't know if they were trying to have it all, all seven cups, um, when they might have had more success going for two or three of the cups. So 
these, some of these cups have got strange objects in them. So maybe the person was poetic, we can say, or they were creative and they had a vivid imagination. So maybe they were not that practical, right? Um, and here it depends on the question to know if it's if this seven of cups is a good card or a bad one, so to speak. So if if the question is about becoming an accountant and working with numbers, the seven of cups is not so good. But if the question is about be getting a job designing stage sets or um, um, designing cover art for music CDs, then it's probably a good card. So the, the third card is the foundation. So if it's showing you what you can build on, um, the Seven of Cups, it depends on the question, right? Because if you're trying to set up a career in the creative arts, then it's good. Or if you want to become a counsellor or a therapist, I think it's a good card as well. Because you can be, you can deal with strange situations or unusual situations that other people could look at and not know what to do with. Um, we can look at, if the card is upright, and say that um, a foundation is possible. Right, because it's upright. But if it's reversed, then maybe um, it's more like something to avoid or something to stop doing. So the seven of cups reversed upside down. It can point. Maybe it's it's pointing to instead of looking at all seven cups, focus your attention and select one or two primary goals instead of trying to have it all. Focus and narrow your focus and and go for a limited outcome, or maybe. Because this card is imaginative, maybe if it's if the Seven of Cups is reversed, it makes sense to become, be realistic and practical rather than let your imagination control you and decide for you um, as often as it does or as often as it did in the past. Um, so that was something about the Seven of Cups. But if we try an obviously good card like the Sun, um, and I have the Sun here, um, there's the sun, the child and the horse, the sun behind the wall, the sunflowers, and so on. So, um, in the past, what were you like in the past? You were confident, optimistic, enthusiastic, and so on. Um, strengths and weaknesses. Your strength was your sunny nature. You know, you saw what was possible. You knew that you could achieve it. You were supported by other people, or people were willing to follow your lead. Um, um, if, if the card is upright, I mean, if it were reversed, sun, oops, sun reversed, um, if we see the sun reversed, maybe we'll think, okay, there were, this is pointing to weaknesses. So a weakness could be that in the past you lacked confidence, probably for no good reason, because it's the sun. Or maybe it shows that you acted too forcefully and maybe in a too pushy a way, maybe because you're trying to cover cover up a lack of confidence. The the third card can show the foundation. So if it's the sun is there, it's a good foundation. So you can do a lot. You can build a strong structure. Um, so you ought to have been generally optimistic you, that your plans were going to work out. Um, so that's something about the sun. The sun's a good card, but it might be useful if we consider a generally bad card or an awkward card, like the Five of Pentacles, right? So you've got the man and the woman, they're barefoot in the snow, um, he's, got, he's on crutches, and it's kind of a difficult situation. So um, with, this, with this Five of Pentacles um, uh, in the past, we can say what we can try and figure out what were you like in the past, okay? So we've got the man and woman in the snow. Maybe you were an outsider, somebody who um, didn't do what was expected, or didn't do what what would, what was normal, or what was considered normal, or maybe you were um, maybe you were an outcast, right? So you were on your own, or people didn't take you seriously, or they avoided you and didn't want to come out and support you publicly. The man, the man and the woman in the, in the card may get along well with each other, but it's hard to see a good and supportive relationship with strangers or with other people generally. Right, so that can be what you were like in the past. Sometimes with bad, with, 
bad cards, awkward cards. Um, it can be difficult to, to look at them and see strengths and weaknesses in what is already a difficult situation. You know, an unfortunate condition that the people are experiencing. So um, uh, we, we can, we, maybe we would say that the situation looks uncomfortable and unpleasant already. And because it's in the past, maybe the point is that it can't get much worse. You've been through the worst that you can be through. You've experienced a difficulty and you shouldn't be afraid of it anymore. Right? So you can maybe have overcome fear of the unknown. And so a strength of this card can be that you've got, or that you, and because it's the past, you had determination to keep going when others might give up or might have given up and be defeated. And this can mean that if that's the foundation and that's in the past, then cards of upset or difficulty that appear later in the spread are not going to have the same power to stop this questioner as they could have had for somebody else who hadn't been through what the question has been through. Um, what sort of foundation is this Five of Pentacles? Um, it looks like in the past there were limited resources, right? So the advice of the card can be now um, start, start set, um, sorting something out Right, try to establish or establish a strong foundation or put money and supplies in order and have access to them or create an ongoing source of income that will pay you later as well as right now. Or maybe because the man and the woman seem to be getting along with each other or in the same boat, find other people like that who know what who've been through what you've been through. It may have been unpleasant, but they've been through it as well because maybe you can help each other or maybe as you exchange experiences you might discover solutions or new approaches that you that that you could try that would result in success okay there's always more to say but um i think that's it for the moment for and for a couple of ways of approaching the third card in the celtic cross Next week, all going well, next Sunday, I'll upload the video for the fourth card. Um, and I'm also hoping that the new site will be more or less ready um, for a beginning with some con content available to get started with. Um, so until next time, have a good week. Okay, bye-bye.